and welcome to Kirchi Crochet Hooks. Please enjoy our free tutorials with just one of a 24 part series on teaching you how to crochet. Subscribe to start receiving our 24 courses that are delivered to your email inbox every few days. By the time you're done, you'll know the ins and outs of crochet. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So now let's get crocheting with Curtsy. And welcome back to the Curtsy Crochet Hook program. Today is lesson number 13, and in today's lesson we're going to be doing basket weaving. It's kind of complicated and it's kind of not. Once you understand it, you're off to the races, but sometimes getting to that level to be able to understand it is actually really quite simple. Basket weaving is actually one of those tutorials that is actually extremely popular when people are looking for something different and an idea to really make their crochet look different and set themselves from the rest of the world. So let's get started on doing basket weaving right here on lesson number 13. In today's tutorial we're going to be working with the basket weave and the basket weave is actually in sets of four. So there's four here, four, 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 four. The only difference is on the end there's actually five. You can actually see that it's kind of looped into here and in order to do that if you don't do the fifth you end up with a piece that looks like it's not balanced right. So if you just visualize it with just from my thumb going there it just does not look balanced. So let's address that as we work along. Um, we're going to work with the Super Value yarn today. It's uh, a pumpkin color. Do your slip knot as normal. I'm using a size 6.0 millimeter uh, crochet hook by Curtsy and this remember never counts as one. So in order to compensate for the actual edges the first one that you should do is five. So one, two, three, four, and five. So you automatically know you've just covered your basis for the end. So now let's begin to do your counts of four. So one, two, three, and four. And you continue to go one to four as long as you want to go. So if you're doing a whole afghan you might want to go as many as you want for a whole size blanket. You might want to do a scarf. It doesn't matter. So one, two, three, and four. And then one, two, three, and four and one, two, three, and four. And now I'm saying that this is long enough for me to show you what to do. So the last section I'm gonna do will be five. So one, two, three, four, and five. So now I know in the very beginning that I have my stitches counted for, for what I wanna do for moving up in order to start. In many stitch patterns, when they say to chain a certain amount, they say like chain 50 and then add 3 at the end. Or sometimes they say chain 50 and says when you start to crochet, count 3 back from the hook. And what they're doing when they're doing that is that they're getting you to um, incorporate some of the chain already into the first stitch. In this case, I don't want you to do that. Okay, so for example, they might say go third from the hook, and if I did that right now, I will have just cut off three stitches from this particular pattern. So what I want you to do is I want you to hold your finger, okay, right, uh, right where the second one from the hook. Okay, so this is the first, go to the second. And the reason for it is that is going to be your very first stitch going in. So let's count one, two, and three because we're going to double crochet ourselves across and right where your finger was grabbing that is your first stitch. That's the easiest way to do it without having to count. Just hold your finger before you count up and begin and that means that the chaining here actually counted as one already and that's why we did that. So I want you to single crochet, or sorry, double crochet yourselves all the way back across this line right into the end and then we're going to get into the basket weaving effects just like so. I've now double crocheted myself all the way to the end and you can see that we're done. And the reason why we had to do that because you would think with the, the actual basket weave that you're actually doing something more fancier. And the reason for it is that in order to basket weave you have to have something that you're growing on to. So let's begin. And I explained this in the last tutorial that we just did is that about basket weaving we're going to use the front and the back posts. But the edge piece here is that you cannot, we're going to do double crochet but you cannot just crochet up three you have to only do two because when we work with the back and the front posts that it's actually working down lower in the actual row. Let's uh, begin and let's you can either start at the front or the back post it doesn't matter either way you have to make a choice so I'm just going to start off in the front just because I want to. So we're just going to double crochet ourselves into the front post so we've already covered that in the last one so you pop it in through the front just like so and we want to keep it in sets of four. 
Okay, so you just want to go in the front enough so that you get four stitches across that are in the front. Okay, so the end one doesn't count. Remember, that's the fifth one that we were talking about. So now you have one, two, three, four, and so now it's time to switch to the back. So let's wrap. We're going to pop in through the back, pop it so it comes back out of the back, and double crochet ourselves. Okay, wrap, go in, come in through the back, back out through the back. And these will pop it to be from the back side. So what I've done here is that I've actually wrapped two at one time, so we cannot do that, but that is actually a technique for other different kinds of patterns. Sometimes they ask you to reduce the amount of stitches, and so that is one way to do it, is to wrap two posts at one time uh, when you're working with post work as well. So it's kind of a mistake, but it's kind of a, a good thing to show you as well. Okay, so we got four now in the back, and you can see that it turned the material to be front in front of us, which created a ridge, and now we want to jump to the front side of the post again. So it's come from the front. So we do the front again for a set of four. Okay, and then we go to the back for a set of four, and you do that all the way across your line. So just keep going in sets of four, just keeps alternating between the front and the back at this time. So let's, uh, what we'll do is we'll meet back up where we'll start the next line. So I'm approaching the end of the line, and usually if there's a mistake at this point, then I have to retake. But we actually should have four left over to do, because I'm about to switch over to the back post again, and then one left over for the side. So I love when a plan actually works its way out. So I'm just going to back post the remainder of the four that are left, and then we just have one left on the side. So now that we're uh, coming back to the side piece again, we need to double crochet ourselves normally. We don't actually do a back post on that one. We just double crochet ourselves as normal. But the fact is, is that we really can't double crochet, can we? Because of the fact is that when we went on the other side, we only chained up two. So on the ends, what we have to do is half double crochet. Okay, so because we only chained up two on this side instead of actually doing three, this side we cannot do a double crochet into the actual physical chain because it will be too high. So let's half double crochet, so wrapping the material and pulling it through, you'll have three left on your hook and we pull through all three. And then that keeps that the same height as your regular double crochet as you've seen. So let's turn this material in our hands. And with the basket weave, there's several of the same stitches done in a row before we do the switch over. So let's now chain up two again, so one and two. And so right now we're at a level that the you can see that the posts are in front of us, these posts are in behind, and we want to maintain that in order to make the basket weave effect take place. So we're just going to double crochet and we're going to match exactly what we see. Okay, so we see that it's grabbing it. Uh, from the front side here, we want to continue to grab from the front side. Okay, so this is going to match this stitch exactly. So with uh, actual basket weaving, it's not a big deal because for the majority of the lines, you just have to match, and then every uh, so often you have to switch it in order to create the weave effect. So the next ones are in behind, so we match that and come in behind for double crochet back posts, right? And what we want to just do is continue to follow this line all the way across, matching everything from what you see. So if it's uh, grabbing from the back, then you continue to grab from the back, from the front, grab from the front. And we'll meet back up on the other side, and we'll continue along. We're now back at the end, and we just have the one last one to go. And remember, on the ends, we have to half double crochet. Okay, so that's going to keep everything within balance. We turn it again, and this will be the last time that we match it from exactly what we just did in the last one. So if those stitches in front, and you match it. So let's chain up two and begin. So we want to do it, so if this is now still in the front, these are still in the back, we're just going to match everything that you see, and this will be the last time that we do it, because the next line we're going to reverse everything. 
so that we can start really creating the effect. So just match everything as you go across this line and we'll meet back up and we'll fix that up on the other side. Okay, we'll get the basket weave really to start coming together. We're now back on the other side and we're about to turn it, but this is what I want to tell you first. Every time you see three ridges in a row, one, two, three, it is now time to reverse the stitches. Okay, so this is, so look for these ridges and that will be your indication that it is time to start reversing. So let's turn this material and start reversing what we're doing. You can really start seeing that there's a really a rigid effect like this and now our next stitch is actually going to start winding this and actually straighten that back out. So let's chain up two as always on the ends and now we want to reverse. So if you see it in the front we're now going to shift it to the back. So wrapping the material coming in from the behind, pop it, okay, and begin that way. So if it's on the front, we now want to reverse exactly what we're doing. And you can already start seeing within the first couple stitches that it's pulling it backward. Do you see that? So we're just coming in from behind. Okay, so all those front that were now in behind are being pulled backward, and these ones that are in behind right here need to be pulled forward. So we're just going to come in from the front, pop it, and we're going to pull these forward. And this is totally going to reverse the effect. So go across this line. If you see it in the front, move it to the back. If you see it in the back, move it to the front. And again, this is in sec uh, sections of four as well. So it's actually very easy to tell what you need to do, which side that you need to pull it from. So begin to do that, and uh, we'll meet back up in the end, and we'll keep on going. Okay, we're now back at the end, and we're going to half double crochet ourselves into the side, as we already already been doing all the way along. And you can see within this last stitch line, you can see that things started reversing. These ones that were in behind are starting to pull forward. These ones are now pulling backward, and you can see it's actually happening on the other side as well. So let's turn the material and again we just want to come across. So the goal is for you is to make sure that you look for three ridges before you start switching and reversing. So if, as long as you can understand that concept is that you just have to keep going back and forward. So let's uh, make this our last line just as a demonstration. So we're just going to chain up two. So if it's in behind at this moment we want to continue to pull it from behind. So these are in behind, these are now in front and we're just going to come in behind and just match everything all the way across and we're just going to continue to go back and forth until you see the three ridges and then it's time to reverse your stitches and start pulling from the other side of each one of these stitches. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you. Uh, basket weaving for many people is uh, kind of a confusing um, particular um, a technique really but once you master it you actually can see that it's actually quite cool basket weaving because of the way that you're grabbing at the post will make your material thicker uh, it'll take a little bit longer to make a project because of that fact but you end up with effects that are really super super cool so this is what you get when you do basket weaving and you can see that the effects are already taking place well, that was lesson number 13 of doing basket weaves and hopefully you've been able to understand how it's working. Once you understand playing with the post and understanding of the pattern to follow, you pretty well got it licked and it's in the bag. Let me now schedule you to get lesson number 14 and in lesson number 14 we're going to do rib stitching. Why would you want to do rib stitching? Well the ribs go like this. So usually with ribs it causes a crochet to contract and expand and then what's going to happen is that usually people use this kind of stitch for maybe a top of a hat in the in the forehead area, socks, belt, anything that you want contraction, usually the rib stitch is the way to go. You'll notice that with regular crochet, if you make a hat too big, once the crochet hat stretches, it never comes back. So it's one of those, the, the rib stitching allows you to have flexibility and to give your uh, work a bit of a stretchability. So let's schedule you now for lesson number 14 as we move you along in the crochet, or in the Curtsy Crochet Hook program right here on YouTube. Until next time, I'm your host, Mikey.